computer. All right, so today we're going to be doing, guys, measure of variation. Measure, wow, this, this marker's not very good. Measure of variation. See, last class or the last few classes we've been working on measure of central tendency. And that's the behavior where the bulk of the data is happening. We want to get a number that represents that. Now we want to be able to talk about the variation or the spread or how close are the numbers together, all right? So the first concept we have, the first type of spread is the easiest one, is the range, the max minus the min. Let me go ahead and see who, who came in right now. Okay. So, um, Mister. Yes. Anthony Diaz is having problems trying to connect. Uh, he's like trying to join or whatever. Something's wrong with his Wi-Fi. All right, tell him to join with all his camera. Okay. And I'll as soon as you tell me uh, that you told him, I'll wait a minute and then I'll accept him. And right. also, Mister, did you yeah. see what what was in chat? Because uh, Jasmine was... asked if there was something else she needed to turn in. No, she's fine. Um, there was notes, but uh, I'm not worried about that. I gave. I, I think everybody here got an A on the notes because you guys were the were the first class to deal with this. Sure. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and accept Anthony. Hopefully his camera's not on because then I have to blur his face. All right. So the range is max minus a min. Um, let's do this stuff here. So. Uh, Let's say you have 41. I'm looking at the numbers right here, 38, 39, 45, 47, 41, 44, 41, 37, and 42. Now, Obviously, the numbers are out of order. When they're in order, you can figure out the range pretty quickly. So what's the biggest number there? It appears to be 47. 47. I agree. So let's go ahead and say 47 is the biggest number. What's the smallest number there? 37. I think I agree as well. And so what's 47 minus 37? And so that's your range. Oh wow! Now that that seems obviously that's that's obviously very uh very easy to do. And uh, did I already accept Anthony? Yes, I did. Um, and it's kind of like it almost feels pointless in many ways, but it is a measure of spread between the highest and the lowest, the extremes. Okay. So. The thing is that it's not too helpful. It is sometimes helpful because it's nice to know the extremes. Okay. Um, but it doesn't tell the whole picture. Um, I want to go ahead and put the numbers in order first for a reason. And then I want to go ahead and introduce a new co concept called the standard deviation. Okay. I think we can do this without having to resort to a stem and leaf. I think, uh, you know, I'll just go ahead and write here 37. Do I have any 38s? Yes, I do. Do I have 39s? Yes, I do. Do I have 40s? No, I don't. Do I have 41s? Yes, I do. How many 41s do I have? Two, three. Three. How many 42s do I have? Just one. Uh, how many uh, 43s? No, 44s, yes. 45s and 47. And now obviously when they're in order, it's much nicer. You can figure out the range real quick. 
I'm going to go ahead and erase the uh, range and rewrite the numbers up top. Um, Mr. What would you like us to copy? Uh, whatever you want, uh, whatever works for you, everything if you like. Who's calling me now? Give me one second, guys. All right, guys, sorry about that. Um, the customer called me and I told him the attrition's going out there uh, Monday or Tuesday. But the pool's coming out real nice. The pressure is real good. Um, I just got to make sure I stay on top of the people, make sure the pool gets built right. The time, the amount of time it takes is important, but you know what? At the end of the day, the pool's going to get done. Impatience is just an emotion. All right. So here we go. This here is our, our numbers in order. So we want to introduce something called the standard deviation. So I erase it up here. The standard deviation. Okay. So now the first concept we have to do is called the deviation. So let's find the mean for this, okay? Let's find the mean. How do we find the mean? How do we find the mean? Where you add all of them together and then make dividers. Correct, correct. That's what you would do, all right? So let's assume this was a population. Let's just assume this was a population to make things easy. We're using mu for it. So mu equals the sum of x divided by big N, okay? So let's go ahead and add up all the numbers. And I think my TI-89 is about to give up the ghost. 37 plus 389, uh, 38 plus 39 plus 41 plus 41, plus 41, plus 42, plus 44, plus 45, plus 47. I get 415, can you guys check that for me? Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, so 41.5 yeah, would be the mean, right? 41.5 would be the mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we want to discuss a concept called deviation. And that means this number here represents the center of our data. Okay, and we want to figure out how much each number deviates from that center. So the deviation is defined as the number minus the mean. That is our deviation. That is our deviation. So if we have these numbers, let's say we put them here, 37, 38, 39, 41, 41, 41, 42, 
44, 45, 47. Those are the numbers we have. And we're going to figure out the deviation. So here's the X. The deviation is going to go here. I'm just, in reality, I should be careful with that. I don't want to confuse you guys. So I don't want to confuse you guys. This is the deviation. It's X minus mu. And these are, this is the data. We'll go ahead and just. Okay. So what's 37 minus 41.5? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven minus what, Mister? Minus forty-one point five. Negative four point five. So this number is neg is the deviation would be negative four point five for it. It's four point five away from the center. So we do it for the other number. Negative three point five. Uh huh. And the next one. Negative 2.5. And the next one? Negative 0.5, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And the next one, negative 0.5. Negative. And the next one, negative 0.5. And the next one? 1.5, or just 0.5. Yeah, 1.5. 1.5, no, it's point, just 0.5. Just point, okay, I was right. 0.5. 0.5, and the next one? 1.5. Yes. So 44 minus 41.5, it's 2.5, 2.5. 45. Wait, minus, I think you skipped 42. Did I skip 42? Yeah, you added an extra 0.5. I oh, know, wait. Yeah, so this it's, one, this one goes to this one, this one goes to this one, this one goes to that one, that one goes to that one, that one goes to that one, that one goes to that one. 42 minus 41.5 is 0.5, and 44 okay. minus 41.5 is 2.5. What's 45 minus 41.5, guys? 3.5. 3.5, and the final one? 5.5. 47 minus 41.5 indeed is 5.5. So right here, you these, these are called your deviations. Each data point has a deviation from it. So now what we want to do is we want to do the average of the deviations. Does that make sense? See, before we did the average, to find the center, the, 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 you know, the measure of central tendency, the mean, basically, or the arithmetic mean, we added all the numbers and divided by the total numbers. Now, imagine we did the same thing with deviation. Wouldn't we get an average of the spread of how far the numbers are? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what we want to do. We want to go ahead and take this plus 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 this, add them all up and divide by 10. What do we get an average of the spread of the deviation? Does that does this make sense to you guys? Yes. We're taking the average of the deviations. Could you please do that, guys? So basically we're doing the same thing all over again that we did with the original numbers, but now with the deviation. Correct. Okay. All right, so go ahead and add negative 4.5 plus negative 3.5 and so on and so forth. I got zero. I don't know if I did something wrong. Is everybody else getting zero? I, I, I probably did something wrong, so don't. No, no, you, you didn't do anything wrong. Don't, don't stress out over it. You didn't do anything wrong. You, you, you're supposed to get zero. Oh. Everybody is going to get zero. In other words, when you try to add up your, your deviations, all of a sudden you realize that it comes out to zero. And you're like, I can't do anything. The reason that's happening is because the negatives are balancing out with the positives. Right? So what we do and a lot of people say, why can't you just do the absolute value? You can. But what we do is we're going to go ahead and square these numbers. In other words, to the second power and rewrite them. 
or do our squared our deviations. Okay? So let's square our deviations. 4.5, negative 4.5 squared comes out positive. By the way, a lot of you, what you do is you go into the calculator and you go negative 4.5 and you raise it a second and you get negative 20.25, 20, 20 you did it wrong. A negative times a negative comes out to a positive. So all these numbers here have to come out positive. Don't, <clears throat> don't allow yourself to, because of the way the calculator works, forget that, okay? So the first one should be 20.25. The next one is 12.25. The next one is 6.25. The next one is 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Then you have 2.5 raised to the second. That's 6.25, 3.5 raised to the second, that's 12.25, and then 5.5 raised to the second, that's 30.25. Now you can add these numbers. The sum of the deviations squared. Now you could do that. That's the sum of your deviations squared. Okay. Also, sometimes referred to as your sum of squares. Sum of squares. I got 88.5. Okay. Which I also probably think is wrong. No, don't, don't, don't know how. I don't, I don't know. I like, I don't know. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be, that's actually the right answer. If you add all these up, you get 88.5. Now, of course, you have to be careful with the way you calculate these things. But now you've received, you've, you, you, you've, you've gotten a value that's actually, you can do something with it. Okay? So now, we can go ahead and take this and divide it by 10. Okay? So we can take 88.5 and divided by 10, which comes out to 8.85. But did we square this, these numbers? Mm -hmm. So what's the opposite of squaring? We gotta go back down to here. Get the square root. Yes, yeah, so then, then if you take the square root of 8.85, you will get what we wanted, a number that represents the average spread of our data. 2.97. But that's without like rounding. All right, so we're gonna say 2.97. I think that's a good number. And this here, this is your standard deviation. We use that symbol for it. And this here is act has a name for it. it's called our variance. So this is our population variance, and this is our population standard deviation. It's always positive, okay? The bigger this number is, the wider the data is on average. Remember, our population standard deviation is the average deviations from the mean more likely said, just the average spread of the data from the mean. Remember, we had to take our deviations. We had to square them. We added them together. We divided by the total, and then we square rooted. So the formula for this, the formula for the population variance looks like this. It says... Sigma squared, and this is lowercase sigma, equals the sum of each value minus the mean, this is our deviations, but square it, all divided by n. 
What's deep. The signal next to the population variation? Yeah, this is this is lowercase sigma. This is a Greek letter, sigma, but lowercase. This is this here is sigma uppercase. <laughs> okay, so whatever. The population standard deviation is sigma equals the square root of sigma squared. <laughs> so sigma is the result of taking the square root of sigma squared. So whatever you get for your variation, you square root it, and then you get what you wanted, the population standard deviation, which is the average spread of your data from the mean. Um, is there? Yes. A type of deal. Which part? Uh, I don't know where to start. Oh, the population variation. Like, well, once you got to there, like, I... I okay, think. but did you understand all this? Yeah. So... All this says here, all this says here, let's break it down. You take X minus mu. See that? Isn't mm -hmm. that this here? Mm -hmm. You square it. Isn't that here? Yes. You add it all up. Isn't that here? Uh huh. You divide it by the total amount of numbers. Isn't that here? Uh huh. And then that's your variation. And if you square root it, you get this guy. Oh, oh! X you gave us the formula. We the did the for answer on top. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. okay, okay. I was like, what is this actually? Okay, okay, got it. You got it? Mm -hmm. so guys, don't, don't, don't be intimidated by the notation. Don't be intimidated by the weird letters. I mean, if you are intimidated, that's fine. Just stop being intimidated. We've done this. This part of this, X minus mu is our deviation. Okay, then it says to square it. We talked about why we squared it. The reason we had to square it is because when we added all this up, we came up to zero. That was no good. Some people can say we could do the absolute value and it can be done, okay? But we, it's a different calculation that we don't wanna worry about that in this class. Then you add it all up, you get this, right? And this will be called your sum of squares. So this numerator here, some people go, oh, just get your sum of squares and divide it by n. Some people just say that. This is your sum of squares. Your sum of your square deviations. Then you divide it by the total amount of numbers you have to get the average spread of your deviations or the average of your deviations squared, of course. Don't be intimidated by this, okay? Now, here's a little thing that we have to talk about. For the sample variance, you get a slightly different formula. It's the same, but you gotta subtract one. I remember that there was a reason for subtracting one from the total, and it was something about some space, different spaces. I can't remember. I, I, at one point, I understood it well. I gotta go over it, doesn't matter. We use the letter here, S squared, and we say, S squared, and I guess I should do it with these guys down here. I'll just leave, leave it up here. S squared equals the sum of X minus X bar squared, like that, divided by little n minus one. That's the only difference. The only difference between this and this here is that here you have to divide by one less. So if this was a sample, instead of me dividing by 10, I would divide by nine. And then to the sample, of course, the sample standard deviation, I abbreviated, S equals the square root of S squared. Now, of course, in order for you to feel comfortable with this, you're gonna have to do some problems with it, but that essentially is, is it. That's, that's what it is. How many of you have never done this before? I think like more than half the class. I've never done this <laughs> Yeah, ever. Okay, so I know the class seemed easy and it still is easy. But, um, you know, you got to be able to calculate this stuff. I really don't like it when at the end of the year, you ask a student to do standard deviation and they can't do it. 
you know, maybe someone can do it with calculators if they have a better calculator, but most of the time, the kids just, you know, they don't want to learn it. I know I had trouble learning it. When the first time I saw this, I was like, ah, I don't want to learn this. So remember, your standard deviation is a measure of the typical amount of entry deviates from the mean. So it's an average of the spread from the mean. It feels artificial in many ways. It doesn't feel fundamental. It's like something that somebody made up, okay? Is it okay I erase this and move on? Uh, I'm gonna take a screenshot real quick. Okay. Okay, mister, we're chilling. Okay, good. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase. Everybody else is okay for me to erase? Yeah. Yes. All right. So, let me tell you a few things about the standard deviation. And then I have to spend some time on I might need the numbers up here. I don't know. So if you have, if all the numbers are the same, if all the numbers are the same, our standard deviation would be what? If all the numbers are the same. Wasn't it like 2.97? Well, wait, wait. Just, let's, let's do this. I'll make it easy. Let's say we have one, 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 one. Okay. And um, we go ahead and figure out the mean. What's the mean here going to be? It's going to be one. Because one plus one plus one plus one plus one is five. Five divided by five is one. And then you're going to go ahead. Average? Huh? So the mean is the average? The mean is the average. Yeah. The, oh, the mean okay. is an average. It's our arithmetic mean when we add up all the numbers and divide by the total. And so if, if you do your chart, one, 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 this is X, and you have X minus mu, which is one minus one minus one, 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 all this comes out to, to zero, 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 right? And then we square them, and zero squared is zero. Zero squared is zero. So here will be our X minus mu squared, right? It's going to come out to zero, 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 zero. And then we raise it to the second power, right? Sorry. And um, we re we've raised it to the second power. Now we divide by five, you get zero. So our sigma squared came out to zero. And then our sigma comes out to square root of zero, which is zero. And so you see, if all the numbers are the same, what's our spread? Our zero. average zero. Our standard deviation is zero because it's the same number. You see what I'm saying? So that's a... That's a special case. If, if, you're st if, if somebody asks you a question, say, hey, listen, this is the mean of this data set, and S equals zero, why is it zero? And you say, because all the numbers are the same. Okay? Now, as, as your data spreads out, let's say, I don't know, this has a mean of 20. Let's say the S here is two. Then if you, this here might have a mean of 20, and let's say your S here was, I don't know, four. See, what the, what the S tells you, what the standard deviation tells you, or the sigma, whatever we're using, what tells you how spread out the data is, you know? You might have something like this then. This has a mean of 20, but the, the S here might be like 10, you know? So, the standard deviation tells you, on average, how spread out the data is. is a good indicator of how spread out it is. And that's all it is. Okay? So now, I need to, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, it depends how you want to look at it. I need to, I, I need to try and teach you a shortcut for the standard deviation. Okay? And um, some of you might memorize it, some of you might not. 
um, I might ask for him from uh, on a test for it one day. Maybe when we get back to phase three, I don't know. But um, for instance, uh, let's start here with with the definition of standard deviation. Well, let's start with the variance. So we have x minus mu squared uh, divided by n. Okay. Now I haven't gone over exactly what this means with you guys, but I should. Okay. Because what this means when I do this is it means it's x of one minus mu squared plus x two minus mu squared all the way to x3 minus mu, sorry, not three, n to the final number minus mu squared divided by n. I'll just leave it like that. Does everybody understand what that means? The first number minus the mean, square it. The second number minus the mean, square it. All the, keep on doing that to all the numbers until you get to the last number, which we say is n. In this case, it'll be the 10th number, but our, you know, you could just leave, you can use n as a way to indicate that, little lowercase n. In this case, I should use uppercase n. Minus the mean square. Does this make sense? Does everybody understand what I'm writing there? No, Mister. No. Okay. Okay. This is the first number. What did we do with it? We took this number and subtracted the mean. Remember? Uh huh. This is the second number. What did we do with it? We subtracted the mean and then we squared it, right? That's what we did in the chart. Remember that? Oh, which we just need to do that for all the numbers. But yes, like, correct. Okay. And this is this is just showing it to you in symbols. Okay. In notation. Oh, so this is also the formula. Yes. This is uh, this here is the variance. The no, no, no. This that's the variance. What I'm gonna teach you right now is a shortcut to getting your standard deviation. And you need your variance to get your standard deviation. The, the standard deviation is just a square root of the variance. Okay, so do, do you understand what I'm trying to tell you with this line I just wrote here? I think so. Okay, so this one says take the first number, subtract the second, uh, the mean, and square it. Boom. Take the next number, subtract the mean, square it. And obviously, this here tells you what to add them all up. Right? So now, do you remember in algebra what this works out to? Have you tried to do that? No. What do you mean by works out to? Okay, so do you remember this in algebra, a plus b squared? Yeah. And it was a plus b times a plus b? Yeah. And you went a squared plus a b? plus AB again, plus B squared. And then you went, oh, that's A squared plus 2AB plus yeah, B yeah, squared. Yeah, I remember this. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? What this does is it's going to be like this, X of 1 squared minus 2X of 1 mu plus mu squared plus X of 2 squared minus 2X of 2 mu plus mu squared. plus dot, 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 plus x of n squared minus 2x of n mu plus mu squared. And then all this divided by n. Okay. All right. Now, what, what happens here when you look at this is you could, you could see you could group these guys. You could group this one. You can group this one. You could group that one. So we can say for this groups here, we can say x of one squared plus x of two squared 
plus dot, 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 plus x of n squared, okay? And I also can group these here, this guy, and this guy, and this guy. So that would be minus 2x of 1 mu, minus 2x of 2 mu, minus dot, 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 minus 2x of n mu. And then finally, I can group these guys here. This is uh, plus mu squared, plus mu squared, plus dot, 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 plus mu squared, all divided by n. Mister, that looks like hieroglyphics to me. Um, no, I don't know. Well, just follow, because at the end of the day, I think what's going to happen is you're going to get the shortcut. So we're doing the shortcut right now, okay? So look at this. What does that mean? X of 1 squared plus X of 2 squared plus the, the, the X of N squared. That means this. That's all the numbers. That's all the numbers squared. But you add them. Take each number square and add them. That's what this becomes. Look, just very simple. Add all the, num all the, all the numbers squared. You have to be careful because there's a difference. So you're adding all the numbers. You're squaring all the numbers and adding them. Squaring all the numbers, add them. Squaring all the numbers, add them. Okay, got it? That's what this says. This one here is a little bit more complex. We're doing two steps. If I write this out, you look at it. Let's just look at it for a second. I won't even put it there. You have negative 2x of 1 mu minus 2x of 2 mu, minus dot, 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 minus 2x of n mu. Well, you can factor out a negative 2 there. You see that? You can factor out a mean, the mu, and then you can write x of 1 plus x of 2 plus dot, 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 x of n. You can factor out each of these has a 2, and each of these has a mu. So you end up with this. So I can say this here becomes this. But before we, we continue this further, I want you to take a look at this, what is this? What is that? That's, that's also the sum that's of a, x. That's a sum of x. It says add up all the numbers. So I can replace this, and I'll do it in the next step with sum of x. And this here, we can rewrite it differently. So we'll get to that. We'll do it in the next step. So now you have the final one here. This is mu squared plus mu squared plus mu squared. Well, how many mu's are there? Mu squared. How many are there? Mister, there's like 47 mu's. I don't, I don't know. Oh, 10, right? It should be 10. 10. In this case, it would be 10. But in general, if you have 10, then it would be 10 mu squares, right? You're getting it. Mm -hmm. If you have 100 numbers, then it would be 100 mu squares. But if you have n of them, if you have n of them, how many of these are there? There are n of them. n times. So this part here just becomes plus n mu squared. You're getting it. You, by, by you telling me 10, that means you understand what's happening. In this case, there's n of them, so we just n, n times. So this is n mu squared. So now, now we're going to go ahead and fix this a little bit. See, we can do something with it. We have sum of x squared minus 2. Well, we said that this is sum of x, but what is, what is mu? What is the definition of mu? Mu equals what? The sum of x divided by n. So instead of writing mu, I can just write sum of x divided by n, and then this here becomes sum of x. And then this here is plus n times the sum of x divided by n squared, 
Well, again, all divided by n. We have to remember all divided by n. And then I'll just go ahead and wrap it up. Sum of x squared minus what's sum of x times sum of x going to equal to? Sum of x squared. Sum of x squared. So we got two sum of x squared, but notice I put the parentheses around it. This says add them up, add all the numbers up, and then square it. This is square the numbers up, and, and then add them. These are two different numbers divided by n here. And then you have here, this is a little bit, you know, this is going to be n times sum of x squared all over n squared divided by n. All that divided by n. Well, if you notice this here, I'll go ahead and let me create a little bit of more space here. Well, I didn't create any space, but I just want to delineate it. I'll just I erase it from here. Notice this n will be canceled out by this, so we can just write it like this. I'll write it over here. Sum of x squared minus 2 sum of x squared divided by n plus sum of x squared divided by n all over n. Now look, these have the same denominator. This is two, negative two of them. This is positive one. So these, you can combine them now. It's sum of x squared minus sum of x squared divided by n, all of this divided by n, and this is your shortcut. That's your shortcut. Oh, that's the shortcut, Mr. Correct. What were we doing this whole time? The derivation of the shortcut. Oh. This is a shortcut? I'm going to have to rewatch this lecture. It's OK. You might want to. I need to like, rearrange my brain. Mister, that does not look like a shortcut. That looks like a more complicated way. What if, what okay. if, what if I showed you that it was a shortcut? Would you believe me? Is there a shortcut? Wait, well, that's not a shortcut. Let's be honest. Right, show us you want us to be completely honest? This, no. This is the shortcut. Oh, this is shortcut. We believe you when you uh, say it's a shortcut. We just don't know how to do it, you know? Like, it's just. No, doesn't matter. I think the normal way that you did at the beginning of class seems way less complex than all of this. Maybe okay. Well, think well, in the first thing that you said. You oh, anyway, me, okay. You want me to prove you wrong? Yes, mister. Prove okay. us wrong. Okay. Ignore all this here. Except this. Forget all, all, all things I did there. Only look at this. Okay. The original formula says... The original variance formula says sum of x minus mu squared divided by n. This one says, hey, you can also just square them, add them all up, subtract the sum of them, but squared divided by n all n. And I say that this is the shortcut and this is the long cut. And you're saying this is easier. And I say, yeah, maybe it is easier, but it's not. Because this one, you had to do 37 minus 41.5, 38 minus 41.5, 39 minus 41.5, 41 minus uh, 41.5, and so on. Then you had to square it. Then you had to add them all up, and they had to square root. And for this one here, for this one here, this is the shortcut for the variance. This is the shortcut. Shortcut. Trust me. Okay? Here's what we do. I go to you. Hey, guys, how many numbers do we have there? How many numbers are here? How many numbers do we have? Oh, we have 10, mister. 10, great. Then I ask you, hey, what is the sum of all those numbers? What is the sum of x? And then you go, hmm, let me see. And we know what it was, but let's go ahead and do it. 37 plus 38 plus 39 plus 41 plus 41 plus 41 plus 42 plus 44, plus 45, plus 47. And you're like, oh, it's 415. And you write 415. And then you go, okay, what is the sum of x squared? The sum of x squared. Well, let's see what that is. And again, my calculator turned off on me. Calculator, calculator, you have abandoned me. It'd be 415 squared, right? Nope. No. That's oh. different. I, I mean, I, I go, 
37 squared, 38 squared, right? Let me see if I can get the calculator to live. It's living. 37 raised to the second plus 38 raised to the second plus 39 raised to the second plus 41 raised to the second plus 41 raised to the second plus 41 raised to the second plus 42 raised to the second plus 44 raised to the second plus 45 raised to the second plus 47 raised to the second. Let me look at the numbers, make sure I didn't miss any. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. And I get this rather big number here. Please, guys, check my numbers if you're doing it on your own. Those of you who oh, want it. Good. I think I wrote it right. I just, you know, I'm in a hurry. So sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I make mistakes with the calculator. I don't like it, but whatever. I'm human. Well, so you have to add all of those numbers squared to find the standard deviation. Okay, so like, say, say that again. Like, Sorry. Go ahead. What are we doing? Like, what, what are you adding all the numbers for? Is that for the standard deviation? I'm, 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 I'm executing the, this formula, this shortcut. It's, I'm trying to find, I found n, I found sum of x, and now I found sum of x squared. <laughs> so I counted the numbers. I added all the numbers. I squared the numbers and add them. I found these three, these three things that I need. And so now I just plug it into the formula. I go 17,311, that's this guy is this guy, minus 415, but you had to square it here on the outside. It's different sum of x, sum of x squared is different than sum of x squared is different. Divide that by 10, all divided by 10. So well, what's I just, that the shortcut for? Well, you'll see. Uh, you'll see right now. 17, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this part first. 415 squared, divide that by 10. I get ah, this cock here. 17,222.5. So now I take 17,311 Subtract 17,225. So I'll just write it so everybody sees what's happening. I got, when I did this part here, it gave me uh, 17,222.5. Okay. So when I subtract them now, I get 88.5. And then what's 88.5 divided by 10? 8.85. And isn't that what we got before? Yeah. Yeah. That's a shortcut. Mister, I think I'm going to just do the whole you long way. It's okay. From the <laughs> All right. I know I could have done it from the beginning, but that I'm supposed to. It would have been way easier, and I would have been put through less trouble trying to understand all these letters when you just could have used numbers. Are you okay with this now? Kind of. This is I the get, variance. I get the concept. No. Okay, look, it's so simple. I'm going to give you some simple numbers. Okay? Let's just do... Can I erase this now? By the way, this is the variance. This is not the Wait, standard... Wait, let me take a quick picture. Yes, this is the variance. Yeah, if you square root that, you get the standard deviation. It's okay, guys. I purposely did it. I've done this many years now. It's the same reaction every year. I'm completely used to it. I know. I get it. But I want to show you the power of this, the more numbers there are, the easier it is for you to compute. Now, obviously, if you have calculators, and this is a non-issue, you have the calculator go through this. But I want you to appreciate that by using a little bit of, of algebra and manipulation, we're able to get a shortcut for this. Now, there's various ways of rewriting that shortcut. Um, I'm doing it the same way the book is doing it, but there's a few ways of doing it, okay? It's the same thing. It doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and we're going to do it now using both methods, the shortcut and the long cut, okay? But I'm going to time myself, okay? And I'm going to pick easy numbers, very easy numbers. Most of the time, the more numbers there are, the, the better the, the, the shortcut becomes. So here's the, here's the numbers I'm going to pick. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
All right. So let's figure out the mean for that. I'm going to go ahead and time myself. Mr. But that's not fair. You're not the average math person. You guys will be, if you want to, more than average. Start. Look, I'm going to take my time. You know, well, I'm not taking my time. I'm just, just let's do this together. Let's do the mean together. It's okay, mister. Take your time. Five plus four is nine. Nine plus three is. Okay. Oh. We're going to find the mean. We're going to find the mean. Add them all, oh, okay, all up. Okay. We're going to do the mean first. We're, we're going to execute this one here. We're executing the variance. Five plus four is nine. Nine plus three is 12. Plus two is 14. Plus one is 15. 15 divided by 5, which is 3. So do we agree that the mean here is 3? Yes, we agree. Okay. We have the numbers here in our chart. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to take each number and subtract the mean. 1 minus 3 is negative. Two. Agreed? Two minus three is negative one. Three minus three is zero. Four minus three is one. Five minus three is two. Now we're going to just make sure that this adds up to zero. Negative two minus plus negative one is negative three plus zero is negative three. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So our sum of our deviation is 0, so we're good. Now we need to square all these numbers. X minus the mean, we're going to square it. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. Remember, be careful with your calculator. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Plus 1 and 1, that's 10. So our sum of squares, or the sum of the squares of our deviation, equals to 10. That's the numerator here. So sigma squared equals the sum of x minus mu squared divided by n. So that's this part here is here. So that's 10 divided by how many numbers are there? How many numbers are there? You guys are alive. Seven. Seven. What do you mean seven? One, two, three, four, five. Five numbers. So sigma squared is two. Well, obviously, sigma, the standard, this is our variance. This is our population variance. But our standard deviation is going to be the square root of two. Right? That is how I taught you initially. And that took me. Two minutes and 55 seconds. So let's just say three minutes. Okay. Now I'm just going to write the formula over here. Sigma squared equals the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared all divided by n all over n. I'm going to start the timer and you need to pay attention because we're going to execute this formula. Start the timer right now. Okay. So how many numbers do we have? Five. Five. If we add up all the numbers, five plus four is nine. That's what this is saying. Plus three is 12. Plus two is 14. Plus one is 15. The sum of x is 15. The sum of x squared is, well, let's see. One raised to the second plus two raised to the second plus three raised to the second plus four raised to the second, plus five raised to the second. It equals 55. Now, all I do is this guy goes here. This guy goes there. This guy here. And this guy down here. Now I take my calculator. And I go 15 raised to the second. Divided by 5. That gives me 45. So I have 55 minus 45 divided by 5. 
55 minus 45, what is that? 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2. I got the same number. Sigma squared is 2. Sigma is the square root of 2, whatever that comes out to. It took me a minute and 28 seconds. The more numbers there are, the faster you could do this. The more it makes sense to use a shortcut. Obviously, we have such little numbers, but it gives you the same thing. It gives you the same thing. Now, just, just a little thing I had to say. This is for the this is a shortcut for the population variance. Um, for the uh, the shortcut for the sample variance. All changes is just the bottom, n minus one. This one stays n, okay? Ah. Are you guys okay? Uh, I think okay is an understanding. In what way, like okay yeah. where, in math? Like mentally or? You're fine guys, don't worry. You're gonna get practice on this. You could pick either way to do it, I'm sure many of you just want to do it this way. Yeah. Can you like move out of the way so I could take a picture? Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, so I think I'm going to quit today on this because I think it's enough for you, right? Yeah, me too, mister. I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs>